So let's get started. Top 10. I tweeted it out a couple of days ago, and I know you've had time to stew on it and everything, and I've gotten all the reaction on, on my Twitter, and I know that some people were happy, some people were not happy. Let's just go through what my decision-making uh, process was like. Where was my mind when I was ta uh, talking about and, and uh, putting together this top 10? Let's start with what I would deem as tier number one. Okay, so you see all the top 10 right now, but I only want you to pay attention to those first four teams. So we're talking about Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, and Alabama. And those were my tier one teams. Okay, I, it, as I'm looking at this, there was no other team that I could really put into that category. These are the top four teams in college football. Obviously, what Georgia has done has put them at the top. So the first thing that I did was put Georgia at number one. I, th there should be no question about that. They are the kings of college football, and now everybody else is chasing. They just completed a 15-0 season. They're back-to-back -back national champions, and they did it with a former walk-on quarterback, albeit a 37-year-old you know, you know, dental major that hasn't gotten his degree yet. I don't know if he's a dental major. He's not, and he's not 37, but you get the point. This program's not going anywhere. They are the kings of college football, and they run college football. So Kirby... What he's done at Georgia, this team is the number one team, and they're going to be the number one team entering next season, at least in my estimation. They've earned that spot. So then you're left with the, the remaining three of that top tier. Okay, So th the tier one teams now, you've got to decipher between Michigan, Ohio State, and Alabama. And let me first say, I think that you could put those teams in any order and be fine and be correct. You know, so you know, th these are not big margins at least in my estimation between these three teams. Now, I think Bama fans would disagree with that and think that Bama has been or should be elevated over what Michigan and Ohio State are, but like fact remains, Bama lost a couple of games this season and they don't bring back quite as much as Ohio State and certainly not as much as Michigan. So when I'm looking at Ohio State, Michigan, and Alabama, two of those teams don't have a quarterback coming back. And one of the teams don't really have anybody that I know about that I can tangibly say I will rely on him on either side of the ball. And that's kind of where Bama is at. Listen, they've got great players. There's no doubt. No one's recruited like Alabama. But they don't have the players like a Marvin Harrison Jr., a Mecca Buka, or even JT Tui Moloau, right? Like they're replacing some very good players. And so it's for that reason that the second move I made was I put Alabama at four. I thought that that was Georgia at one and Alabama at four. And then it was some sort of discussion with Michigan and Ohio State. And the fact remains is that when you look at what Michigan is going to bring back next year, now, we'll, we'll see what the decision is with their coach, Jim Harbaugh, but when you look at what they bring back, just from a playing perspective, their best players this last season in a really remarkable year were all young players. Guys like J.J. McCarthy, Donovan Edwards, Blake Corum, who's coming back, Junior Colson, the linebacker, um, Will Johnson, the corner. Uh, they've, they've got some really good players on the line of scrimmage that are coming back. They did a great job in the transfer portal, getting players that will plug and play in the areas where they need them to plug and play, namely the offensive line. So Michigan went to number two because they've just got more returning and, and more that I can rely on, specifically a quarterback. And a lot of talent, both on the defensive and offensive side. And that lands Ohio State at number three. And I spent the most on this tier because I wanted to at least just walk you through, you know, why I made the decisions and, and put the placements that I did. Ohio State gets the nod over Alabama because I, I trust that Ryan Day is going to get a quarterback ready when that quarterback has the benefit of throwing to guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. on the outside. Cade Stover is coming back. They're going to have a healthier running back room. I know there's questions on the offensive line, but let's be honest, this skill position group is going to be one of the best skill position groups in the country. And so for that reason, I really don't have a doubt that whoever plays quarterback for Ohio State should have a remarkable season. There hasn't been a quarterback struggle under Ryan Day. 
just haven't haven't seen it. Back to his days, really, even to Boston College. So, you know, this guy's got a great track record. You can say the same for Alabama. There's no doubt. But we just don't know what the skill positions are going to look like, like we do at Ohio State. So the top tier, the top four teams, that's how I settled on Georgia, number one, Michigan, number two, Ohio State, number three, and Alabama, number four. They are my top four. And I believe that there's a bit of separation between those four and everybody else. So now let's get to everybody else. Let's talk about what became my tier two teams. And there was really four teams that I was, I was debating, I was looking at, and I was, I was looking at those, you know, five through eight spot in my top 10. And that was between Penn State, LSU, Florida State, and USC. And I won't take as much time, but let me just tell you what I, what I like or trust about each of these teams. At number five, Penn State, This is a a team that when you look at what they were able to do, they were able to go plus four in the win column this year from seven to 11 wins. Their only two losses were to Michigan and Ohio State. Um, It's a defense that is very good, uh, will continue to get better. Curtis Jacobs says he's coming back. Abdul Carter was a good young player. I know that they're going to be missing Joey Porter, but this is going to be a good defense. And then on offense, they've got those two running backs. Their offensive linemen's coming back, fashion new. Like they've got something there. They were really dominant in that Rose Bowl. And that's a a real jumping off point for them, in particular when you look at the fact that their quarterback, Drew Aller, who's going to be their quarterback next year, probably has a higher ceiling than Sean Clifford, who was their quarterback this year. And that's not a knock against Sean Clifford. Like he he had a pretty good year, a really good year. Penn State could be much better. And so I like Penn State at number five. I like LSU at six. And really, I I settled on the fact that while LSU and Florida State and USC each have their quarterback coming back, and I probably trust Caleb Williams the most of any of those quarterbacks, I think the element of what I really landed on is that Brian Kelly is a heck of a coach, and I know that he's going to continue to improve. Those young offensive linemen for LSU will continue to improve. That's a defense that will continue to get better. And under Brian Kelly, like we saw at Notre Dame, they will be a very formidable team. You can say it was an outlier to beat Alabama. It probably was, but they'll continue to get better. And so I'm going to go LSU at number six, Florida State at number seven. I I love what they did this year. I really do. I like Jordan Travis a lot. He's a talented player. And, And I put them above USC, who I put at number eight, really for the sole reason that while Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams should be an amazing offense, they just continue the same old status quo on defense. You know, they've come out and and Lincoln said after a deep dive uh, in his program that, you know, no changes are going to be made. And that's fine. That's, that's, you know, his discretion. There's no doubt, but something needs to change. If they're not going to change things on the staff, then they need to bring in different players Uh, in order to improve that defense. And we've seen that from other teams, right? You can improve your defense in a year, but they need to do that. And so I don't, I just trust Florida State more uh, with the year that they had over USC, who I put at eight. That was my tier two. And then the last two teams that made the top 10 in a debate uh, with everybody else who was in the almost category was number nine, Tennessee. And this was a big tip of the cap to that Orange Bowl win in which Joe Milton looked very good. The young wide receivers looked fantastic. I think Brew McCoy is going to be one of the better players in college football. And when you've got a quarterback that, that, that can run that system like he did in the Orange Bowl with quality wide receivers in that system, the wide receiver choice route system, then you've got something, and you've got something pretty special. And so Tennessee goes in my top 10 at number 9, and then Washington at number 10. I think Washington is is a a real dark horse playoff caliber team. You look at that team, they lost some close games, could have gone either way. Michael Penix and the combination between him and his former coach, now head coach, Kalen DeBoer, is a great combination. They've got good young pass rushers. They're talented on the outside. Washington's going to be a heck of a team next year. And so they found themselves in my top 10 right at that last spot at number 10. So Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, Penn State, LSU, Florida State, USC, Tennessee, 
and Washington in my way too early top 10 for 2023. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.